Continuous voter registration exercise to commence in Edo and Ondo states as candidates embrace the imminent campaign season. African First Ladies launch uh, We Are Equal campaign, but the women ask for just more than a foot in the door of governance across the continent. Also on political update today, PDP urges reconciliation amongst members as former President Obasanjo says Nigeria is not difficult to govern. We have these and more on our lineup. I'm Fisayo Ogunfui. Welcome. Ahead of the governorship elections slated for Edu and Ondo states later in the year, INEC has announced the dates for the resumption of the continuous voter registration exercise in the two states. Miogidi has details of these and other activities at the commission's headquarters. The twin brothers by name, Edo and Ondo states, on the political news again, as they set to renew the leadership, September and November respectively, and INEC meeting leaders of the political parties on series of issues. First, no voter will be deprived of participating. As the elections in the two states approach, the commission has decided to resume the continuous voter registration from Monday, 27th May, 2024, to Wednesday, 5th June, 2024, from nine in the morning to 3 p.m. daily, including the weekend. There will be no online pre-registration option in the two states because of time constraint. Again, we encourage those who have not collected their PVCs in the two states to seize the opportunity to do so. As the voters prepare for the polls, another reminder from INEC. Let me therefore seize this opportunity to once again reiterate to party leaders the need to continue to maintain law and order during the electioneering process and beyond. Just a quick one on two issues. First, the electoral violence that led to the suspension of by-elections in Kano and Inungu states sorted out and a new date for the conclusion will be soon announced, INEC chairman confirmed. And also, INEC has received notification on the conduct of four by-elections, though no date yet. Now, former President Lushegun Obasanjo says although Nigeria is a complex country, it is not difficult to rule as long as the leaders are honest with the people. The two-time leader of the nation made his comments in Oshogbo, the Oshun state capital. Former President Olushegun Obasanjo is on a three-day visit to Oshun state. As part of activities lined up for him, the former president inaugurated the VIP lodge of the government house in Oshobo, started by the previous administration. He commended the governor for embarking on various developmental projects across the state. While describing Osho as a secured and peaceful state, Chief Obasanjo advised the governor to synergize more with security agencies. Nigeria is a complex country, complex country. But Nigeria is not a difficult country to rule. You have to be honest with your conscience, with your people, with the people, and with your God. Governor Admola Adeliki, who appreciated the former president for honoring the state, assured him that he would continue to salvage public funds and assets from waste by showing results of the government policy of completing all abandoned projects by previous administration. We are showing results of our policy of completing all abandoned projects by previous administration. During his stay in Oshun State, the former president, Chief Obasanjo, will be attending the coronation of Governor Ademola Adeliki as the Ashiwaju leader of Ede Town. What could be described as a step forward for women in Africa and their shared aspiration for gender equality, the We Are Equal campaign, a program organized by the African First Ladies for Development, has been launched in Abuja. President Bola Tinumbu performed the launch, says his administration is equally determined to ensure a future where no Nigerian child is excluded from quality education, irrespective of gender. Another big day for the African continent as the quest for gender mainstreaming and inclusive development hits a major milestone with the launch of the We Are Equal campaign in Nigeria. 
The campaign is a project of the Organization of African Force Studies for Development, OAFLAD, aimed at driving gender mainstreaming and women empowerment. In the spirit of sisterhood, first ladies from member countries of Waflad joined Nigeria's first lady, Oluremi Tinumbu, who is leading the campaign in the country. Yes, we are equal. Launching the hashtag We Are Equal campaign in Nigeria, President Bola Tinumbu applauded African first ladies for being true mothers of the continent and staying the course in their efforts to close gender gaps. I see you leading, believing, and working hard. We wait for them. The Nigerian leader is happy with the choice of education as the focus of the campaign in the country and was clear on his administration's readiness to provide access to education without leaving anyone behind. Let us carry forward this campaign, which promises to give an educated girl child the potential to bring the necessary change in African community for the better. As an educationist and lifelong teacher, stems from the desire to see young girls and women who dropped out of school due to several challenges including early pregnancies, cultural barriers, financial reasons, and many more, have a second chance to complete high school, acquire higher education, and valuable life skills to enable them reach full potential in life. The focus of the campaign and its expected role in building a future where gender equity will be a reality drew the applause of other first ladies appreciation and further pledge of commitment to the campaign came from Minister of Education, Professor Tahir Maman and Development Partners. Now, levels of female participation in politics and governance in Africa remains low. Some experts have attributed this to a male-dominated and patronage-based political culture. This is combined uh, with gender, economic, and household inequalities, uh, an entrenched perception that uh, the women folk should be elsewhere and not as elms men. Many Nigerian women continue to break through these barriers with doggedness and finesse. Senator representing the Federal Capital Territory in this 10th Assembly, Yuriti Kingibe, joins us today. She is also a civil engineer. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, just uh, three of you as against uh, seven in the last Senate, do you even dare to miss any sittings where issues relating to women might uh, surface? There are actually four of us. Yes, four, uh, four yes, of Yes, we're four now. And um, no, we, we, we tend to go for almost all the plenaries, except when we're out of the, the state. Um, but we need to address the issue of women representation. And I think we can only do so through legislation. Because now, we've tried every other way, it's not working. Now, looking at, you know, when you talk of four, it looks like uh, perhaps uh, using a teacup to scoop things uh, in a pond. Uh, would you say you're, you know, you've been able to at least uh, make your impact felt, especially on issues of gender? Well, not on, well, no, I, first I was going to say not on issues of genders, but we have. Um, when, during the week that we were ch celebrating um, elimination of gender-based violence, we, I, I being the chairperson for Women Affairs, talking to the men, making them understand that the lack of women in governance is not just affecting women, it affects the whole country, it affects our development, affects everything. So I got them all to wear orange mufflers in solidarity with women in eliminating gender-based violence. I find that this particular 10th Assembly is most of the time receptive to gender issues. So it's, 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 it's coming along. Of course, if it was just four of us, we wouldn't make much of an impact, but we add other men who are um, he for she's, gender friendly men to any of the issues. Is that number growing, the he for she's, or is, still, is it still in the minority? No, it's growing. I think it's growing. I think there's more of them in the 10th Assembly than there were in the 9th Assembly. And therefore, I'm hopeful 
that um, we can get uh, one or two legislation passed in this 10th Assembly with regard to gender representation. All right, let's come to your own experiences now. You had some expectations and some interactions uh, with uh, your constituents uh, on assumption of uh, office. Have you found your legislative experience worthwhile or underwhelming? Well, maybe overwhelming is more like it. There's just so much to do. And my experience is bound to be a little different from the other senators because other states have three senators where in Abuja I'm the only senator. Abuja is also one of the fastest growing cities. Um, as of the time of my election, we were at a population of over 4 million. And, therefore, and because the senator is the highest elected office in the FCT, everything that bothers the people of the FCT, they go to the senator for it. So it makes it a very, very, very busy job. Uh, talking about, you know, um, your influence and all that, uh, I saw somewhere in the press where you said uh, a lot of your salary, you even used some palliatives that was about last year and all that. Have you been able to, you know, uh, get the buying, for instance, of people within the FCT into some of the concepts that you might want to develop and legislations that you might want to pass uh, to ameliorate some of the, you know, hindrances or, or you know, problems that uh, you have seen in some of these uh, area councils as well as uh, territories within the FCT? Unfortunately, the senator does not have a budget for a lot of these projects. I have... Um, constituency projects for which I have been doing a lot of things for in, and then with my any resources I can put together for instance I gave 2,000 free jam uh, registrations to FCT people and also I've been doing a lot of through the federal government of course um, palliatives and interventions for indigent people I've also there was a time when I distributed rice all over the federal capital territory and now I'm in the process of getting them industrial training fund so maybe between six to ten thousand FCT artisans will register for upskilling so every time that I find anything that the federal government is doing I key into it it's assisting and I'm hoping that in the future some other things we can get involved with the minister of the FCT and do a lot of other people projects. All right, we'll, we'll come to that uh, very shortly. Uh, there, there, there'll be some questions about that. But in terms of the deluge of, you know, uh, requests from, you know, different parts of the FCT, you would have perhaps set some legislative priorities. So what issues have you identified as your legislative priorities? Well, there's a, when it comes to the FCT, there's a lot. I mean, the process, first of all, we have a lot of institutions that are not backed by any laws. So one of the ones I've just put in that has gone to first reading is the um, School of Nursing and Midwifery in Guagualada. It exists, but no laws to back it. So I've done that. I'm also trying to, to put in a tenancy bill in FCT where making, just like Lagos, making it illegal to charge more than one year's rent. And for certain um, range of um, houses quarterly. If you're earning 20k, 30k, 40k uh, 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 in a month, how are you supposed to pay 200, 300,000 naira rent and pay th two years rent? So some of those things can be um, controlled with legislation. In terms of my legislative agenda, actually, I only have two major ones. I'm hoping to pass the um, gender female participation in politics and governance bill and I'm trying and I'm hope, getting a lot of buy-in from the men and I think with their assistance and the other women in the Senate we can get that done then I'm also hoping that I can get a bill for a mayor for the FCT FCT needs one very very badly because it will help the city run better the needs of the people will be better taken care of. And it's been something that FCT has been hankering for since this, this democracy. I think since 1999, we've been looking for that 
mayor. So those are some of the things I hope to do. But we also have little, little bylaws that will assist in day-to-day -day life in terms of designated car parks for public transport, things like that, that will make life a lot easier than everywhere. Even the highways are, you know, stopping points for pickup and drop-off. So in FCT, there is a lot to do. Even our health insurance scheme is very, we have the basic framework, but we need to flesh it out, create a board. So there's a lot. If you look at my portfolio, I have a lot, but remembering that I'm one, one of 109 senators, so I also have to remember that other places have their own bills that they want passed to. All right, we'll come back to the last line, but let's take something from PDP. Uh, Chief Tayman of the People's Democratic Party, uh, Sam Elanyahu, uh, says uh, the party remains unshakable in spite of the exodus of some party stalwarts in recent times. Speaking specifically about the resignation of former governor and deputy speaker of the House of Representatives, uh, Emeka Ihedio, Sam Elanyahu, uh, popularly known as the Sam Daddy, believes uh, uh, more big names will join the umbrella for everyone that leaves. It was done to give party back, power back to the people after they gave power from the military. So it's an organic organization that has its top product in every nook and cranny of this country. There's no family that will go to this Nigeria who will find a PDP member. And it's not built around anybody. It's built within the people, amongst the people. Don't forget that the president of this country, or former president of this country, His Excellency, Mr. Obasan, who retired, left the party, tore the card of the party in the national board television. He didn't stop the party from winning the good state where he comes from. I'm sure you're aware of that. We have a project where the former vice president of this country left the party with the vast seven governors of this of PDP instruction to another party to form a seat from that to a peace. PDP never died. They still came back to PDP. And organization, when you become said to be a member of an organization, it's an individual thing. So when you move, people are looking for opportunities to come in. Because some of them will believe that you have hijacked the party over the years and it's an opportunity for them to come back. So PDP name was still intact. Yes, we don't encourage our people to leave the party for any reason. And we have always advised, remember where you are. And in politics, what you don't get today, you can get tomorrow. And the party that has given you a CV from nowhere to where you are. She's not just left for a reason because you were not able to get what you understand. So I think that PDP is intact anymore. All right, Senator Ayan, we're talking about uh, the exodus of uh, party stalwarts from the party. I uh, will still have uh, Senator Eriti Akingibi right here with us, Senator representing the FCT. Talking about the Labour Party, your party, are you still very actively involved in party activities, especially with all the push and shoves that we have seen in the party in recent time? Uh, yes, of course, specifically in the FCT. I am the leader of the Labour Party in the Federal Capital Territory and I'm very involved in the party especially here. All right, let's, uh, you mentioned something, you know, a little bit, and, uh, you know, it uh, was perhaps what uh, a lot of people saw uh, when you just assumed office. Uh, there seemed to be some, perhaps, misunderstanding uh, with the Minister of the FCT in terms of, you know, your working relationship. Has that been resolved, or will it be resolved soon? Well, there isn't even a problem between us. Um, that's the truth. I'm, I don't have any issues with him. People just assume, and you know, with all due respect to the press and the media, sometimes things get a little exaggerated. Um, it's only natural that I'm a representative of the people. There may be some things I want and the, the minister to do, and he may not agree to that, but there's no issue between us. And I'm sure that um, in the future, 
this is only the beginning of a four-year period. I expect our working relationship to improve. Oh, we've seen some activities around the FCT in terms of infrastructural development, and uh, we expect to see some commissioning soon. Will you be attending? If I'm invited, of course. All right, sir, so that will be the program, but very quickly we'll look at your experiences. You are not one year old yet. Uh, the inauguration, you know, of, uh, you know, the 10th Assembly is about uh, at least a, a month or two away. Mm -hmm. But in terms of your experiences so far, have you found it worthwhile? Has it been challenging? Now, what are your hopes for the future? Well, it has most definitely been challenging. You know, it's one thing when you're outside the system to think, oh, the people inside it are not working. You can fix it in a flash. It's not that easy when you're actually inside it. So it's been challenging, but um, I'm a tenacious and resilient person, and I'm hoping that we will achieve, I expect to achieve most of the things that I set out to achieve when I ran. So I'm indigenous of the, uh, you know, uh, territory are saying, you know, you had your uh, glasses wound down during campaigns, but uh, many of your colleagues uh, now are, you know, uh, driving in tinted glasses. Nobody even knows where, who is inside the vehicles. Uh, can they still have access to you? Oh, yes, they do. Every time I don't live far away from the secretariat and any time I'm around there, it doesn't matter. Even if I'm in your car, the people around there, the people selling newspapers everywhere I go, the FCT people recognize me and they do have access to me. All right, before we go, we'll have to say a word or two about your profession. But many Nigerians don't know that you are a civil engineer. Uh, of course, the engineering these days have, has been uh, basically paperwork on the uh, floor of the Red Chamber. But uh, do you feel nostalgic at times, perhaps uh, now that uh, you have not been practicing your profession? No, life is an, an evolving process and from engineering I've evolved into other things and of course I still have the knowledge and it helps me to understand certain infrastructural issues, but no, not really. All right, well many will say now you are building blocks on the legislative floor, so it's still about development. We've had uh, Senator Ireti Kingi Bay uh, with us today on Political Update. We wish you the very best. Hopefully we'll bring you back as, uh, exactly when uh, the 10th Senate will be a year old and then we'll be looking at uh, some of the efforts uh, that you have put in place and whether mm -hmm. they have come to fruition. Thank you for coming on Political Update. Thank you very much for having me. And thank you for watching this episode of Political Update uh, where we give you the uh, latest news on the corridors of politics in the country. Between now and when we come again on Friday, keep it locked on Africa's largest and finest network service of the Nigerian Television Authority for news, reviews, previews and interviews. And between now and then, play your politics for the greater good. Bye-bye now.